Welcome back, dear friends. This time, how to make a steampunk ammeter. There's a bit of a dichotomy there, because obviously in steampunk circles, we don't mention electmetricery. We may allude to it, and we may use it secretly to enable us to achieve mechanical wonders, but we never mention it in public. So I'm going to have to disguise it. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, this is my favourite meter. Obviously you mustn't use digital ones, and most meters and gauges these days are digital. But it's lovely still to be able to get on eBay these moving coil meters, because you'd never know that they weren't proper old-fashioned Victorian mechanical gauges, which they sort of are, I suppose. Now, the great thing about these, these ones happen to be 0 to 50 volts, um, but there's no reason why, because of the movement inside and the way you can wire them up, you can get it to read, not anything, but most things, virtually anything. Now I've got a gap here. We can't have gaps, I hear you cry. We've got to fill it. Entropy and all that sort of thing. There's room for a gauge to go there, which is rather pleasant, and also a hole to cut out one of those big, nice big window with that lovely flickering flame effect. The other one behind it, sort of like a motive force. So I'm going to show you how to convert one of these. Now, in the past I've connected these, I've kept them as voltmeters and I've connected them to an Arduino which has turned barometric pressure or whatever into a calibrated reading on one of these once I've re-engraved my own legend, so to speak. Um, but this time, because I want to measure amps, because volts is sort of like the speed of electricity, amps is the amount of electricity, so to speak, um, you can't measure it so easily. So without more ado, but with several changes of shirt, let's get on with it. Oh, this is absolutely ridiculous. Sitting here getting completely bogged down with the design for a dial. Ugh, it's crazy. But it's enjoyable and it kicks me off the streets. I think flow rate, I'm happy with that. Coulombs per second, obviously you need to say what you're measuring it in. That's nice, but now I've thought, well, actually that would be quite nice having that text curved. Let's see how many hours I can waste, or well not waste, I can spend. But this is working really well. I haven't experimented with electricity and current for so such a long time. But just using that 12 volt whatever it is, 20 watt spotlight thing, is brilliant as a resistor because it's just dispelling all the heat as heat and light. Shows you why you shouldn't use incandescent bulbs. So I've got an amp going round, here we are, amp. I've made, um, fiddle around with this wire, made it, found that two bits that long, because obviously I don't want it too thin, because it might, it'll just create too much current and perhaps acts like a fuse, although I don't know what I'm talking about. But I thought double it anyway, and double the length, and it works. That's pointing roughly to an amp. You know, I'm very pleased with that. Columns a second flow rate, and it's nicely balanced, so that is lovely. I'll clean that up and try and get that installed along with all the other different layers and LEDs and everything else on the original. With these gauges, you simply unscrew two screws that are holding the legend on, the original one, and then you can cut, there's the resistor that it was using, potentially, ah, potentially, what I'm using, um, to read 50 volts, which it wasn't, because it's not an accurate resistor. Um, and then this pulls out. They are things of beauty, look at that. Ever such a fine coil around a permanent magnet in the middle. Beautiful. And then there's the thing that keeps the magnetism floating about in the right place, which again pulled out of that bit. And I'm going to glue that into here. It's all coming dripping back. Funnily enough, I've got a very, very old one of these that was again being thrown out of somewhere or other and I managed to get permission to rescue it. What a thing of beauty. This is a mirror galvanometer which came from the school that I attended. And I think this was, because it was built in the 50s, this is built by Philip Harris. And funnily enough, this came from the same school. And this has got Philip Harris, they were closing it down and chucking absolutely everything away. It was absolutely upsetting, heartbreaking. But that's beautiful and the idea is, and I remember it used to have one but I made it into something else, 
there was um, something that would project a beam of light at that mirror there and then it would bounce back over huge distances if you want with an arrow shape against a wall or something and the slightest voltage on there would move it so by the time it reached the wall it would be a huge movement it's such a beautifully simple idea amazing a lovely permanent magnet and you can see it works the same way with the coil around and I dare say that was actually a shunt like one of these huge resistors that I'm making so it could um, measure uh, current accurately isn't that amazing it's got feet that you level it up with oh you can see why I do love this stuff so much it's beautiful and that would just be some soulless little lump of plastic with a digital readout on it a bit like that one although I do like that it's not that soulless I've had it for quite a while as always if you want to glue something into something else or two bits of plastic together a little bit of packing tape on the table you can drip super glue in it or squidge it on and super glue won't stick to this so you don't have to start prizing things off tables there we are that fits on beautifully you can see how it all holds itself together with two little brass screws there's the magnetic thing on the back and that whole thing just pushes into this bit there we are I mean that looks nice it's very practical and all the rest of it but you just can't beat having the lovely glow the warm white glow either side it just brings it alive I was trying to remember how many Vero strip, Vero board holes and things I need. And look, I found the destructions from the um, climatic revelator. With lots of detailed notes. Ever so useful to have this, just for reference. Um, so I now know how many of these, or how large they need to be. There's the. Um, and someone's, a couple of people have asked, why don't I just buy some surface mount LEDs? The reason is I've got a roll, several rolls of this that I, I don't know, bought years ago or people have given me. And I'm slowly working through them, unsoldering them. Sometimes I use them in blocks of three, but other times I just unsolder them and stick them on. It's all solder them on. Um, there are easy ways of doing it, but why not? Recycle, upcycle, whatever it's called. Just checking it works with a battery, and that's it, you see. You get a lovely widespread of white warm light. Beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. Doesn't that look lovely? It's really nice, bathed in lovely warm white light. There it is. I've checked and calibrated the length of this coil and soldered that on. So now the electric trickery comes in here, 12 volts, it will there. And the meter's reading the difference across the resistor and the output actually just feeds the LEDs as well. I think, actually, I'm going to connect it up first. Before I make any holes, I just want to see whether it does actually work, whether it has um, some undesirable effect. Now, this is what's in this top bit. There's that switch, the emergency stop switch for the fret motors, and the two stepper interface motors for the tuning on this side, just to make them have the nice flickery lamps through. But all this space, so I need to make sure it doesn't knock into that. And a three, and a two, and a one. So far, so good. You can see that, yeah, look, oh, and everything's working, which is great. Our eyes are working, the person sensor's working, everything down there is working. It's found its zero point. You can see why I needed such thick wires, because every time she moves, it changes, which is lovely, right? The risk of ruining a perfectly good ukulele machine thing mind you the filth does give the laser a lovely look that looks nice that works beautifully and all the holes line up now in the past I've considered spraying the outside of this brass or something but I've always decided that actually it's nice to have a little bit of variety of colour just add something to it I've drawn out the panel as is it's this one there we are. Because I just started thinking this might just be a bit much. It's, the black didn't look right and there was this and there was that. And and I want this flickering lamp effect, but I, it could look wrong. It could just look like a load of bits plumped onto a bit of wood. 
It's several hours later and I've made a decision. I'm not keen on that sort of shape. I'm erring on the side of this one with a nice little name plaque. Now it's important to have names on machines and I spent some time fiddling around looking up a good place to start because it's not easy quite often is a sort of Latin and ancient Greek and things looking for words and things so I think having gone through a range I'm going to settle on Chordophone which is another name for a ukulele apparently Auto Canticus which is music and does it itself good enough for cancel work I'm very pleased with that. It just, I'm happy with the balance. It, it looks nice. It doesn't look like things are stuck on. Looks like it's meant to be there. Faster than a speeding bullet. We've done it. Look, dear friends. I've got all the necessary particles cut out, having made lots of mistakes. There's the, uh, oh, this is what I've just realised. I had to go back and look through all the videos of how I made the Is It Time For Team Machine to find out how I achieved this. It is not tracing paper. It is this two millimeter um, white acrylic. So I'll get that stained and other bits sorted out and painted and then I'll get back to you. Ooh, oh, Cantona, look. It's coming together, I've glued that on. And I've had to route a little gap around here to allow for the meter. I still haven't got this right. Idiot. I've just realised that's not right, I don't think. I have to think about that, actually. I've got the ghouls cut. It's so nice seeing something that you've drawn on the screen actually coming to real life. It's difficult sometimes to see how large things are, but, I mean, that's just perfect for the size of that flickering lamp I've got. And having, I'm very pleased with this because that's going to push in from the back. In fact, oh, something like that. Because it was just too much having that big wide flange around it. And the sign. Here we are, so the sign's done, engraved. I changed around the words in the end. Autocanticus Cordophone. Can't decide. Let me know in the comments if you're if you've got a better idea. Call the phone Autocanticus. Not sure. Let me know what you think. Right, I'll get finish getting all this together. It's, it's, uh, I mustn't say it. It's thrilling to be doing this. That's how I found a new word. Oh, and the other thing I've realised, of course, with this fitting in from the back, is just like the switch there. I can mount the gauge on this baseboard and. I realised, just like the front of here being held on with these two screws, these dome nuts, I can hold this whole panel on with the three dome nuts round there. Oh, what joy. The project that just keeps giving. It's so nice when a plan comes together. Look. I managed to put it together with the bits I'd made. That's just so nice. And that just clamps at the back with room for the lovely flickering lamp. I think that looked lovely and it, it's starting, this is, I'm so pleased with this. Just that shape. But this is the first project actually, funny enough, where I've used sort of different layers. I remember doing it for this and thinking, I wonder what that looked like. And having done it for that, taking a big leap of faith and actually designing her enclosure. I don't know whether you can see it with these and on the outside with those. And it really does work. It's worked really nicely. This is a lovely thing about designing and making one-off projects. I have learnt so much. Aesthetics, technology, electronics, processing, the teensy, so many things. Bigger ste stepper motors, servo motors. Ah, oh, it it's just like going to university. University of building an automaton. Sounds a bit pretentious, but you get the drift. It's really nice. And so I'll get that... Um, the gauge mounted, see how that goes. It's always so much easier to position something by actually gluing things in the right place rather than measuring, because that would have been impossible to measure all this. Now, hopefully I've got the measurements right. No, it's not, look. Ah, I see why you should measure. That's now hitting that leg. What a pain. I can trim a little bit off. So close yet so far. Quick adjustment made. The application of glue and a nice heavy weight. This is what I'm talking about. That's beautifully glued down. 
and then I can put the gauge in like so that sits in there beautifully supported get all the connections made and then the front but look at that that's perfect and then the three dome knots here to hold the front panel on and hold that in place and I am very pleased with how that looks I'm happy with that because what I've done is I've taken that diffuser off it because what with the two millimeters of um, opaque plastic it's just getting a bit blurry and just a simple flat bit of mirror behind it and then that gives a nice a nice look and you do see a little bit more any of the little top flame bits coming off so that's nice next job another fan you say well this is the main gubbins of the uh, ukulele pine machine and it's got the most incredible drivers for the larger stepper motors they're incredible they can handle sort of like an amp and a half two amps i think there's a little adjuster pot on them so you can adjust the maximum current which i've learned is how you set up a uh, stepper motor a big one um, they didn't have heat sinks on so I've stuck some because they do they do say they get very hot and I'm not surprised amazing thing they have got thermal protection in so they'll shut down if they do get hot but because I have to leave them on all the time otherwise the, when they're set to one of their sort of 16 I think it is sort of intermediate steps if you switch them off they forget that and they'll slowly drift out of tune and won't know where they are so they have to have power all the time I originally mounted them just inside this nice mesh window but there's nowhere for the air to go back out it's all in a good drawing in cool air past this and then then what it doesn't go anywhere to go first job drill a hole in the side I think I'll make another little circular window there that'll be fine it won't get in the way of anything and then add a fan but look how little room we have that's no problem with one of these I think this has got to be the most posh packaging I have ever seen for many things, especially a small fan. I'd happily pay thousands of pounds for one of these with this lovely packaging. It's even got a shiny label on it. It's amazing. Look, it's got a window homes, nice bit of graphics with some acoustic information, bearing information. There's the thing, but it does come with all sorts of extra bits, which I don't know what they do. And you turn it over, this beautiful box, beautifully printed, the back opens up. And then it gives you a list of all sorts of other stuff. Don't know what. Isn't that amazing? I didn't realise it was going to come with all this stuff. It just was a 10mm deep by 40mm diameter, some top square fan. And I was absolutely thrilled. My son loves this because he's studying graphics and art and things. And he wants to keep the box because it's so beautifully made. Right, there's the fan and there's all sorts of connections. I'm going to take that out. It's meant to be a very, very good quality quart one. I think it costs £13, whatever that is in dollars, um, from Amazon actually in the, U in the UK. Noctua or something. No affiliation as always. No one wants to give me anything. Not even the time of day. So I have to keep making all these clocks up. Get it apart and see if it fits. I've got the fan installed. First of all, I had to move that up. I don't know why they weren't parallel. And move that up a little bit, which was absolutely fine. And that left me room to fix the beautiful little fan. These dark brown bits are actually rubbery. Moulded onto a hard plastic case. It's actually brilliant to sort of cushion it. I made a little adapter out of 3mm acrylic to lower the fan a bit. No, it's just going to blow her up there, up there, and out the hill, and draw other heat with it with a bit of luck. And then for the outlet, which is here, I um, laser cut a disc, and on the other side, I engraved it, just with a little rebate, so that a piece of this nice gauze can fit in there. So I'll get that screwed on. Now then, the last part of this project is to work out how to connect this power supply to that socket in an attractive steampunk manner. Now I was searching through my drawers, as you do, and discovered that I'd got part of one of these shower hoses left. It's, I cut it down when I was building an epizoscope for someone, that's right, for a customer. 
Um, and I had this left over, and it's not long enough for some things, but for others it's perfect, and this is a perfect job for it. So what I've done, that's what's so lovely about these antique brass shower hoses, they fit normal plumbing, fitting plumbing, plumbing fittings. So I've got the end of the power supply, I've cut the plug off, fed it in there, a few, well, three layers of shrink wrap, and an 8mm olive compresses perfectly and holds it in place. A thank you. So that's one end, and the other end has been sitting overnight. Because there it is, look, we have the um, the other end of the plug socket thing um, and I've glued it into um, a 15mm, I think it's a half inch in this country at least, a tap connector, plumbing again and that just fits perfectly and with one piece of 15mm pipe glued inside that the end of the shower hose, this bit just pushes inside and can be glued with super glue, it's perfect. And the great thing about gluing this onto one of these half inch pipe fittings is that these are 15 millimeter elbows, brass elbows. The other side of the plug socket thing, if you turn it down such a small amount, it can be glued in there. And then the two fix together and you can tighten them as well. And Bob's your proverbial aunt. Fantastic, I'll get on and get all this soldered inside, soldered up. That's better. Look at that. Lovely. Right, moment of truth to see whether I've wired it up the right way round or whether I'm going to instantly destroy all the microprocessors with a three, two, a one. Ha ha ha! Thank goodness for that. Right. So, this has been a most useful load of stuff to show on the video. Next time, I've just come back from taking the dog for a walk and inevitably, oh, come up with a ridiculous idea. Because I think I mentioned earlier in this video that I suddenly realised Victoria needs to be able to tell her adoring public when her next performance will be because at the steampunk event, Whitby, next February, really excited about that. It's the first one we've been to since before the pandemic, stopped everything. Um, when loads of crowds of people come round, I can't have her singing and playing all the time because it'll wind up all the other stall holders for a start. Um, so I'll need to be able to say when she's asked um, my next rendition will be at 2.30 or 2 o'clock or something, which sounds like a really nice way to do it. And I think I mentioned that I could have a remote control button in my pocket so that when someone does ask her, um, press the button and then she tells them that sort of thing. With some random elements, obviously, don't make it simple. So she says it in different ways each time. But I need a way to tell the teensy what time for her to say. And I was thinking, well, interesting, um, because there's not much room. And I was thinking, well, I'm going to have to have something on the back of her enclosure, because I don't want something else to have to plug into all this. I want something simple. I was thinking, well, you could have two volume controls and effect potentiometers um, with like an hour and a minute dial. That could tell it. And I thought, why not use one of those telephone Strouger um, dialing things. I think I've got a couple up in the loft. That would be ideal. And it would also allow me to prolong the end of this project by quite a long time and learn how to actually read the pulses that come out of one of these Strouger dialing things. Thanks very much for watching. As always, please remember to click like, subscribe and the bell button. Hope to see you next time.